Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, merciful God, we thank you, Lord. It is a wonderful day. Day we've never seen before, we'll never see you again. You've blessed us. And Lord, we, we know we've had some things going on, Lord, but Lord, you still watch over. You still bless us. You still hold us. You still care for us. You still woke us up this morning and blew the spirit of life into us once again. And for this, Lord, we want to say thank you. Thank you for being so good and so kind and sinners like us. Lord, we ask you, Lord, now, Lord, to forgive us of all of our sins and shortcomings, Lord. Sins of omission and commission, Lord, because we know we are sinners, Lord, but we are saved by your grace, saved by your darling son, Jesus, who took the time to come down 42 generations just to save the wretches that we are, Lord. And then he died on that cross, and on that rugged cross, Lord, they took him down and put him in a borrowed tomb, and he arose with all power, Lord. And so with that power, Lord, we, we thank him, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for watching over the sins that we are for blessing us when we didn't deserve it. You still did it, Lord. You still are our only source of true love, Lord. You still come and help us even though we do things, Lord, we know we should do. You still say, I'm a pressure. You still watch over us. You still lift us up. You still help us do our sickness. You are still the God of gods, Lord. The Lord of lords who watches over each and every one of us every day. Then, Lord, now we ask for you to bless Union Baptist Church. Let that Holy Spirit come on in, Lord, and tarry with us and, and rest with us. And Lord, we thank you, Father, for all the goodness and the mercy that you've given us. So Lord, let it come on down and be with us, Lord, and dwell amongst us. And let it be a true, true healing power, Lord. Go out to the hospitals, the byways, the highways. Touch all those, Lord, who are sick and shut in the ICU and hospice care, Lord. Getting dialysis, Lord. Those who are taking medication, Lord. Those who are watching over all types of people who are caretakers of this city. We need you right now, Jesus, all around the world. We thank you, Father, for this day, this first Sunday in August, where we can sing and shout and say, Hallelujah! And your name is above all names. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for the preacher of the hour. Bless it, Lord, from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet, Lord. Give him a word, Lord, that will reach to the heavens and down to earth and tell the sinner man that the way to just sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And Lord, we all want that eternal life. And so, Lord, when it's all said and done, when we can study this world no more, we want to hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. Give us the praise, the glory, the honor, and we will thank you, Lord, forever. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus, name. And let's all say amen. Yes. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your goodness and your mercy. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. What a wonderful day it is. Amen.
stumble along the way. But I lean and depend on him to pick me up. He don't have to dust me off with him. He just pick me up. I'll make the rest of it all right. Amen? Amen. Come on. Come on. Uh, the deacon took up half of my time and I was going to speak to him. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to get on out of the way real quick, fast, and in a hurry. But if you pray with me and stay with me, we'll get through it together. Come on, and at the end, we'll find something that we can shout about. Amen? Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. We find this morning that we are going to have very restrictions that we're going to try to speak on. But sometimes on, when the Spirit hits you, you, you can't contain yourself. At least I can anyway. Amen? Amen. Uh, we're going to look this morning at the book of John, starting in the fourth chapter. And we're going to go forth from there, and we're going to uh, go to other places in the Word. And I'll tell you when I can get there. We're going to go to Matthews also. This morning, I want to speak for just a little while from the subject, if I could give it a subject. When God lets you let your faith be tested. Come on, sir. Amen. Amen. We, we lean to depend on a lot of things and we put God on the back burner. Yeah. When we rise in the morning, if the sun is already bright in your room, you don't have to worry about putting on the light. Come on. But you have faith that even if you have to turn the light on in the room, when you click the button, that light will appear. Come on. Amen. We have faith in that light. Yeah. But there are times when the light don't come on. Come on, sir. Not that it was a storm or anything during the night, but you didn't pay your light bill. Oh. But you're not worried about it because you said, oh, well, I got money in the bank. I can take care of that. Come on, sir. To only find out that your bank account has been frozen. You don't have anybody that you can call on the phone to ask for a loan because you've done that hundreds of times and paid nobody back. Whoa. Now, what you gonna do? You're gonna, you're gonna ring God now on the phone and ask him to pull you out of blessing. Uh -huh. But Come for on. the last six months, yeah. you haven't even called his name. See, we have to realize in this thing that the word said God is a jealous God. Yes. That's right. If you have a little bit of him on the inside of you, there comes a time when you're going to be tested. Mm -hmm. Oh, just think about it. Just think about it. He is going to put something in your way to make you call his name. Yes. Come on, That's sir. being tested. Yes. Yes. I realized, my brother, when you had the accident the other day, mm -hmm. you were being tested again. Mm -hmm. Among the multitude of times that you've been tested, well, you was tested again. That's right. But he gives us testimonies, yes, sir. not test the lies. Come on, sir. Yes, sir. We find a lot of people get up and they Tell, test the lies, not test the moments. Yeah. I remember years ago, we had this lady when I used to have a little church not too far away, and we used to give away bread, and this lady came and she always would take, she wanted all the sweets and stuff, and one day, me and me, I approached her, told her she couldn't take all the sweets from everybody else, because I realized what she was doing. She told me that I had to give it to her. I couldn't refuse to give it to her. And if I refused to give it to her, she was going to call the authorities on me. I said, well, call the authorities because the authorities didn't bring it in and the authorities didn't give it to me. So knock yourself out. To come to find out, to get on my better side, she told me, she said, well, look, 
I know I haven't been putting any money in when I come on Saturday. She said, but I got a settlement coming. And I'm going to bless the church for X amount of dollars. And I just shook my head because I knew deep down in my heart that she wasn't testifying <coughs> with the truth. She was doing test of lying. Come on, sir. And I've learned through the years to see people get up at funerals and multitude of places and tell lies. They know they're lying, and everybody else that know them know that they're lying. But yet still, they test a lie. But they don't realize that they're being tested as well as the Christians and the people that believe wholeheartedly in God. We find that being tested is in the Word. Look at uh, the book of John, the fifth chapter, the fourth verse. It says, For the angel went down at, the sea, at a certain season into the pool and did what? Trouble the water. Now, now look at this now. It was a certain season that they troubled the water. It wasn't every other week or every month that they troubled the water, but it was a certain season. See, like when I grew up, they used to have what they call revival services back in the day. But that was done mostly in the summer. Yes. Months, not too much in the winter. But here is this man wanting to be blessed because he had faith that if he could get in that water, he's going to be blessed. Come he's going to be healed. Come on, son. But every time he tries to get in the water, what happens? Somebody blocks his path. And he had just tried it for one time. He tried it over and over again. But we see here he had what? Faith. He had faith that one day, that one day he was going to make it in. Come on, son. And if he got into that water, that, that leg that's been bothering him, that pain in his heart that's been bothering him, going to all be what? Washed away. Yeah. He had faith. What about the, the one that was up on the roof and his friends was letting him down? in front of Jesus so he could be what? Healed. He, he had what? Faith. He had faith. And even the boys that was letting him down, they had what? Faith. They had faith because to go up on that roof up there and let anybody down past, I'm going to have a second thought. Come on, son. But the faith that they had and the love that they had for their friend that they would do what? Let him die. Yes. Right. Amen. We're talking this morning about faith. We, we find that the Hebrews believe absolutely in what? In faith. And they showed it what? By doing what? Keeping the commandments. Do we try to keep the commandments? Eh, a couple of them we try to keep, but we don't try to keep them all. Amen. But well, yet we say that we're what? We are five baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit? Not so. Because we do what? We have very little faith. We learn at an early age not to touch certain things. Yes. There was this pot belly stove that sit in the middle of the room and they told you don't touch it. <laughs> That's right. But yet many multitude of children go had to it. test it out because yes, they yes, didn't have faith yes, that it was going to light them up when they touched it. Yes, but glory be to God when they touched it. They found out they had faith in what the one that told them that it was hot 
meant exactly what they said. It was hot. So now they became believers that if it's red, don't touch it. Because it's hot. Being tested is what we go through each and every day in life. God is testing us. He tests us in the morning to see if we're going to pray and thank him for allowing us to rise. We say, oh, oh, that, 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 that was a blessing. Yeah, it's a blessing, but it's also a test. Come on, sir. I was tested a few weeks ago. I was over on Bergen Street, and that car was in front of me, and he stopped. I stopped, and I looked. There was a parking space to the right of me, and I assumed that he was going to go into the parking spot. To my amazement, he didn't want the parking spot. He wanted to make a U-turn. So he started to curse me for being as close as I was to him. Mm. But if he could drive, he had enough room to go into the parking spot. Yeah. I sit there, let him do what he was doing. He cursed me out, called me all kinds of names, asked me did I have any brakes on the car, and <laughs> on and on. I didn't open my mouth, but then I realized that Maybe about 40 years ago, yeah. it had been old and popular. <laughs> but because of the God that lives on the inside of me, and the God at my age has started to give me more patience, I was able to keep my mouth closed. Yeah. But what if I didn't go through the test in a godly manner? I could have been dead. Or he could have been taken. So we have to realize that we have to pick our battles that we want to fight. Yes. God is able to do all things but what? But yes. fail. Who fails? We, we fail. Fails. Yes, sir. I remember a preacher stating that he asked his wife why she was sitting all the way next to the door. She didn't have any explanation for why she was sitting next to the door because when they were dating and younger, she used to sit so close upon them he could hardly drive the car. <laughs> so he was asking the question. She couldn't, she couldn't explain why, but we know why. She got used to him now. She didn't, she didn't need that closeness no more. So she feel comfortable sitting next to the door. And he went on to say to her that God doesn't do things like that. Well. He's always right there near you. She don't feel, she didn't feel the need of the closeness anymore as long as she was in the vehicle with him. But he was showing her that God never moved. God was still Right there in the middle, and he was still close. He was closer now than he was years ago because he was doing what? He had faith and he was serving God. Yes. Being tested. We get up in the morning. We go out. We get in our car. We go wherever we're going to work or whatever. We don't worry about whether it's going to start. Because I got a new car. I know it's going to start. Yeah. Glory be to God, it does yeah, start most yeah. of the time. But there will come a time when it's not going to stop. But don't go haywire. Don't go crazy asking yourself why or what this, that, and the other. Just thank God to give you some patience to be able to deal with the situation at hand. Yeah. Because we worry so much about stuff that doesn't mean nothing. We worry about the clothes that we're going to wear. We're invited to a anniversary dinner. They say, come as you are. But you can't go that way because you know for your rags that you wear. But what 
if you don't have any? What if your house caught on fire the day before and you lost everything? Come on, come on. You don't have any money because your bank account has been set down. You don't have no credit cards because the credit cards was in the house and they got burned up. Now what are you going to do? You gotta have faith that somebody, somebody somewhere is gonna come to your rescue. Come on, sir. And one person we know will come to your rescue is who? Is God, because he sees what? He sees all, he knows our every need. Yes, he does. He may not feel feel it when we want it, but he's always on time. Yes, he always. Always. I, I remember having a dream where I was falling off the building, and somewhere I picked up pastor that they say if, if you fall off the building, and if you don't wake up in the midst of falling, you're dead. Come on. Come on. But I want to know one thing. Come on, tell me. How did they fall off the building? Know that you're going to die if you didn't wake up. How did they know? Where, where did they prove? But, but they, they live to tell me about it. <laughs> Got to have faith Come on, to sir. look through some of the stuff that people tell you because people will tell you anything. Amen. You got to have faith in God to show you the way to keep you on the straight and narrow. That's right. We find that right. people say that they have faith, but have you been tested? When, when people turn their back on you and say bad things about you, who are you going to call? Come on, sir. They don't put the lie out there and people believe a lie faster than they believe the truth. Yes, sir. That's so who are you going to call? There's no one person to call. Come on, sir. That's going to give you some peace. Yes, sir. And that's Jesus. This thing about faith is just this just started today. It's been around a while. Thank you. Since the beginning of time. Yes. Okay. I told you I was going to be short. Come on, sir. So I'm going to give you a few places that you can find about faith, and I'm going to move on out the way. Amen? Come on, sir. Uh, Matthew 6.31 talks about, oh, ye of little faith. Yes, sir. Yeah. Do you know anybody that has little faith? Yeah. No, you don't know about me. Our family here at Union don't know nothing about things like that. Come on, sir. We don't, we don't know anything about people with little faith because all our people that we deal with daily believe in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and they believe in faith. Amen. Amen. Uh, Luke 7, verse 50. Say, Jesus said unto the woman, Thy faith save thee. Go in peace. Come on, sir. Yeah. Why did he say that? Because she had faith in what? She had faith in him. We have to have faith in God for all things, not just for big, great things. If you want a big house up on Ivory Hill and you're praying to him and asking him for the house, but do you deserve that blessing? There's a difference between blessings and faith. Amen? Come on, sir. Do, 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 do you hear me? Yes, sir. There, there's a difference between a blessing and faith. I'm not going to go there. That's another, that's another sermon. But we have to understand that the love of God is a favor. It is a favor. He doesn't have to bless us or favor us with the things that he favors us to have if the faith in him, but through the faith in him, it's nothing but love. 
He pours out his love through our faith. We find it that in Luke 17, verse 5 says, Lord, increase our faith. Come on, sir. Yeah. Every once in a while, we have to ask them to increase our faith because we do what? We get weak along the way. Yeah. 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 We, we get weak along the way. We're human. Like now, we have a lot of people we're praying to come, still from coming back into the church house because they got what? They have got comfortable with being home. Yes, sir. So they feel that they don't have to come into the house and sit up no praises anymore because they have got comfortable at home. Mm. Oh, I can pray to God at home. Yes, you can. But he said what? Where there was a multitude gathered, right? He would be where? He be in the midst. Yes, sir. I'm not saying he's not at your house, well, but he dwells in his house. That's right. Reverently, so much more than he will in your individual home. Now you see that's something different, but he's blessed you and favored you to be able to walk around and do all the things that you're doing, but you can't spend five minutes in his house. Oh, I don't have to go. And by me not going, I can do this, I can do that, and the other. But what if he had taken you away in your sleep? What if he's taken you away five years ago? What if he had taken you away last year? Where is your faith? Come on. We don't have the, the a mustard seed is very small if you ever seen one. Yeah. Some of us don't have the faith of a mustard seed. Come on, sir. But yet, they tell you they're full of the Holy Ghost and they have five baptized. But when they become tested, when their faith become tested, are you going to be able to stand? Help us, Lord. We say all kinds of things through our mouth. But are they true? Acts 16, verse 5 said, The church established in the faith. Faith is what established the church. That's right. Having faith in God, want to live a righteous life. That's where our faith comes from in the church. We have faith in the church? Yes, we do. Because of what? Because we have found the Spirit dwelling where? In the house of the Lord. Come on, sir. We come in here Sunday after Sunday. Nobody tests a pew to see if it's still worthy to be set up. But you, we have faith that it's going to do what? It's going to hold us. Yes, sir. I recall being at a church service many, many years ago with the youth of the church that I was attending. And they started praising the Lord and, and the church had a basement to it. And those kids were stumping and jumping and shouting over the place. The whole building started to shake. Yes, sir. And I believe in trusting God, but I said, if they don't stop jumping in here, this building may fall in. I mean, it was serious, but then I thought about it. Where's your faith? Yeah. Come on, sir. Yeah. You got faith in God. Ain't nothing going to happen to you. No. I recall years ago, I used to haul junk cars to the shredder when I lived in New York. And they stacked them so high on there that once they put on the truck, was stacked too high to go underneath the underpass. Mm. When I hit the first underpass, I said, well, I can keep going because that now has crushed the cars down, so I'll be able to keep going. And I got to the next underpass, and I hit that underpass, and the car on the back fell out, fell off the truck and hit the ground. And I started to pray. Now, I wasn't praying 
to God to let the other one stay up there. I was praying to God to let me get to the strata with the ones that was on there so I wouldn't get arrested for dropping the cause on the highway. I had enough sense to pray to him and ask him for a blessing, but but I wasn't doing what I should have been doing. Come on, sir. All I wanted them to do was keep that car, the, the other three cars up on that on that truck. That's what I prayed for. That's it. Yeah. That was a, to me. That was the only thing I knew how to do at that particular time because I wasn't. Grounded in the word like I am today. Come on, sir. But he blessed me to have the cause to stay there until I got to the shred. I looked on the news that afternoon and it was all <laughs> over the news <laughs> that somebody had dropped a car on the Long Island Expressway. I laughed. I laughed for step that I don't know. wonder who that was. <laughs> All, all the time, it was me. Yes. And the guy I was driving the truck for, I told him, he said, well, that's what I always tell you, not to put our mark on the on the cars until you get to the shredder. Because everybody, everybody that went into the shredder had a color. So he already told me not to put the mark on until I got to the shredder. When I got to the shredder, I did put the mark on, but my heart was. <laughs> but I prayed to God and asked Him to keep the rest of them on. And I received that blessing by having what? I had enough faith in me to ask who? I asked God to help me. Come on, I, didn't, I didn't try to do it on my own. Yeah. Even though the guys at the, at the uh, company had messed me up for failure. But the God that I serve helped me out once again. Yes, he did. All right. When my wife was in the hospital and having my daughter, and her blood pressure kept fluctuating back and forth. I prayed to him and I asked him to bless her. He did. Come on. When in years went by when I had to have a couple of operations. Yes. He blessed me to come through because I had faith in him. That's right. One of the, the situations where I've had an operation, I died. Mm. I heard the doctor saying, we're losing him, we're losing him, we're losing him. And he said to me, you know, we lost you. He said, but we brought you back. I said, Lord, I thank you. But see, I realized something from that. Satan always shows up when you're at your lowest. Yes. Come on, sir. See, when you're at your lowest, he shows up. Yes, sir. And he don't just show up one time. He continuously bashes you. Yes. He said, yeah, you done made it through other things, but you ain't going to make it through this. And all I could do was rebuke him in the name of the Lord. Yes. Every time he came, he wouldn't tarry long when he came. He, he would just stay a few seconds. But he was planting his seed in the brain. Come yes. on, come on. But because of the word of God that was in me, right. I was able to withstand his fight. That's right. And when I went through the operation, I woke up and they're telling me about that I had left, but yet God brought me back. Thank you, I was able to be what? I was able to stand and say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you that I was able to kick him out the way. I was able to be able to tell somebody about your grace and your mercy. I was able to realize it was you that brought me back. Not the doctor. Not the doctor. It was you because of whatever you had for me to continue to do hadn't been finished. Come on, sir. I look at now how people don't really seem to hold on to life 
as we older people do. It doesn't mean That's the right. same thing to them yeah. that it means to us. That's the truth. I, 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 I remember when the planes hit in New York and it, they was talking about some of the people that was with the planes thinking they was going to get, I think it's seven virgins or something faster and, and they was going to live in luxury. I wonder how they felt when they woke up in hell. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, sir. We, we look at even now with the virus starting to go away, so to speak. Life will never, ever be the same to us that have lived through it as it was before. The days go by faster. The years go by faster. Yes, they do. Nothing is the same as it used to be come on, come on. in the past. That's right. But yet, we as human beings, some of us feel that we can do things even worse than we have ever done before because nothing can stop us. There, there, there ain't no God nowhere that's going to do anything for me. I got to go out here and mug somebody because I need my next meal. I need my next fix. They don't even think about serving God. They don't even have his word in their mouth or their mind. So we have to pray for them. We have to try to encourage them. Because they need God in their life. We need God in our life. Even though we got one foot in the grave and the other one out, we still need to lean and depend on God. Come on, sir. We still need to have faith in the one that woke us up this morning. The one that started us on our way. The one that blessed us there go. to be able to hear. He blessed us to be able to have our sight. Able to walk a little bit. Come on, sir. Where is your faith? When the test comes to your door, yes, sir. will you be able to stand? Yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful yeah. that I'm able to stand. Come on. I'm grateful that when, 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 when trouble draws near, yeah. I'm able to call on Jesus yeah. because he is my beginning and my end. Yeah. When people talk about me, yeah. Yeah. disgrace my holy name. Come on. Yeah. I'm glad that I can stand on the word of our Lord and Savior. Yeah. And I can say, Lord, I yeah. thank you. I because of the things that they said about me, you know it's not true. Yeah. I thank you because the help and strength I got, it came from you. Yeah. I thank you, Father God, that the faith that I have in you is what's keeping me going day, year in. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord, that the faith that I have From Delaware to New Jersey. Come on. And, 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 and people are cutting me off and doing all kinds of mean things to me. I can just sit there and just cruise on knowing that I got a God that's protecting me on every side. Yeah. See, see the other day when my brother was hit by the car, the car that hit him didn't know that they was hitting a holy vessel. They didn't, they didn't know what they had hit. But see, God is the one that blessed Tyrone to realize that he had an edge around him. He had a fist all around him. So he was able to encourage somebody else. They look at that car. But who brought me out of that mess? God brought me out of that mess. No matter what you're going through, the faith that you have in God will bring you through. Now, if you don't have any faith, pray and ask him to give you the faith that you need. He will. Yes. He'll always be able to give you what you need. Yeah. If you need some bread, he'll give you some bread. Come on, sir. If you need some blood, he'll give you some blood. Yes, he will. He will give you peace. Peace. As well as love. Yeah. Have faith in him. And he'll bless you even more.
Do it in remembrance 